I think the Russian people have been very special to me. I am I'm perhaps because of my European upbringing, but I, I enjoy talking to them. I find them very open, very generous, and they appreciate support. They appreciate people who say, you know, I understand why your government is doing this or this or this. This is I've tried to stay open minded and, and listen to both sides. The thing that I have seen as an American is of course this American enmity towards Russia from the very beginning. I grew up in 1940, uh, 46, I was born. In the 50s, it was it was so anti-Russian. They were everywhere. They were in our schools. They were in our State Department. They were spying on us. They were stealing the country from us. That was the way the American right wing, not even the right wing, I'd say the Republican Party, mm-hmm. pictured the Russians. They were actively engaged in infiltrating America and changing our thinking. Yeah. And I, television shows were based on this. It was very much the J. Edgar Hoover mentality that communism was even behind uh, the student protests of the 1960s. Uh, this was the direction in which the FBI and the CIA were thinking. So I grew up with, with a prejudice. And it took me many years. My father was a Republican, uh, and he was a stockbroker, and he was a very intelligent man. But even he, because he was a World War II soldier, uh, c- he was a colonel, had fallen under the influence. You, it had, in order to be successful in American business in the 1950s, you had to have a very strong anti, uh, anti-Soviet line. Very strong. You wouldn't get ahead if you expressed any kind of, let's end this Cold War, any kind of activity of that nature. You'd be cast aside as a, as a pinko or somebody who was not completely on the board with the American way of doing business, which was capitalism works, communism doesn't. And in, in particular, communism is embodied by the Soviet Union um, is the enemy. So, hence, hence, yeah, that's the way you were the narrative behind the Cold War. That's correct, and it, it, it basically lasted. I mean, you saw the ups and downs of it uh, when Reagan came in. I was. Well, first of all, we had the crisis of 1962 with the Cuban Missile Crisis, and Kennedy proved himself to be a a warrior for peace. He resolved that with Khrushchev. That was a big moment, huge moment, and people don't give him credit enough for for really saving us from a war that could have could have affected all of mankind. But it still didn't avert. No, because the moment he was killed. Honestly, there was a lot of, we can talk about that. As you know, I've made a film, uh, JFK Revisited is a documentary we released uh, this year about th- the movie I made in 1991. But with the moment he was killed, I would argue that Lyndon Johnson went back immediately to the old way of thinking, the old way of doing business, which was the Eisenhower Truman way, since we, which, we, which we had adapted since World War II. That was an interim you have to think about it from Roosevelt dies in 45. Roosevelt has an interim of 16, 15 years where he, 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 has, a, he has more of a democratic regime, more liberal. He establishes, he recognizes the Soviet Union for the first time since the revolution, and he actually has a relationship with them. He sends ambassadors who are friendly, and he, wants, he has a relationship with Stalin, et cetera, and uh, at Yalta. And uh, or no, at Tehran rather, that's where he had the relationship. Uh, Do you think if JFK lived, we would not have a Cold War? No, absolutely not. I and we go into great depth on that in the uh, film, and I urge you to see it because it goes into all the issues around the world. Kennedy was being very much an anti-imperialist, it turns out, and many people would dis- don't understand that. But you have to look at all his policies in Middle East with Nasser. He ever had a relationship with Sukarno in Indonesia. Uh, with Latin America, he made a big effort with the Alliance for Progress. And uh, when Africa, above all, with Lumumba, he was very shocked at his death and tried to def- defend the, the right, the integrity of the Belgian Congo with Dag Hammarskjöld of the UN. He made a big effort. Unfortunately, it didn't work out because they were, Dag Hammarskjöld was killed and then Kennedy was killed. And Congo descended into the chaos of Joseph Mobutu's dictatorship. But Kennedy was very active in terms of, as an Irishman, not as an Englishman, he was an Irishman, 
And I say that because, well, we'll come back to that because Mr. Joe Biden is an Irishman, but it's a different kind of an Irishman. They're both Catholic Irish, but Kennedy really made an effort to change the imperialist mindset that it still was very strong in America and uh, Europe. And Lyndon Johnson changed back to the old policy, and we were never able to really keep detente going with the Russians. Briefly had it with Carter, but then Z B B Brzezinski came in. Brzezinski was his national security advisor. He was put there by Rockefeller, and Brzezinski was a Pole. He got revenge from the Poland. Poland has always been attacking Russia, as far as I remember, back to another century. I mean, the two world wars that occupied Russia, and so tragically, uh, entry points were always through Poland and Ukraine. Uh, so uh, Brzezinski got his revenge, and Carter ended up being an enemy of the Soviet Union and creating, the, as Brzezinski took pride in it, he created the atmosphere, the trap for the Soviets to go into Afghanistan in 79. That trap was set, he says, he said, in 1978. Um, so th there was never, except for brief moments, of periods of detente with the Soviets. And I grew up uh, under that. I didn't really know anything of this uh, going on because I was, I was learning. I was educating myself as I was going, learning movies and trying to, trying to be a dramatist and this and that. So I wasn't thinking about this. Then uh, when Reagan came in, I was worried again because it was a, it was a beat of the old beat, which was there the most evil empire. I mean, it does it goes on in American history. It doesn't end. Reagan got a lot of points for that, and of course when uh, when uh, Gorbachev came in. It was a beautiful moment for the world. It was a great surprise. It was probably the best years of, for America, from, at least from my point of view, in terms of this relaxation in the mood. 1986 to 1991 were great years in terms of ability to believe once again that there could be a peace dividend. But the world changed again in 1991, 92. There's an internal mechanism. Who knows? You could blame... You can blame uh, the United States. You could blame Russia for... Uh, it, Gorbachev was perhaps not the right man to try to administer that country at that point. He had great visions. He was a man of peace. But it was very difficult to hold together such a huge empire. So vision is not enough to hold together the Soviet Union. I think uh, the details are interesting. I followed up on that a little bit because I was recently in countries like Kazakhstan, talked about... Uh, the, the, the negotiations that were going on and the breakup of the Soviet Union. It's a very interesting story because it involves everything. Ukraine, of course, everything is going on now. Some, what is it, 30 million Russians were left outside of the Soviet Union when it collapsed. They had no home anymore. They were homes in other countries, such as in Ukraine. Uh, so it's an interesting story and with repercussions today. Mm -hmm. Kazakhstan is a, per, is a good example of keeping a balance, keeping it neutral. Yeah. He, he played both sides, and he, he because uh, Yeltsin wanted uh, him to join uh, the, the Russian Confederation in a certain way where he'd be supporting against Gorbachev. There's a whole in, inward battle there. Uh, I think the, the Ukraine came along with uh, Yeltsin as well as... Uh, You'd have to, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember now, but two other, two other regions came with him. And uh, that was a bloc that broke up the, uh, the Soviet Union. It was Yeltsin's uh, plan to, and it wasn't make the Russian Federation, and they did. 